Late last fall, tech specialist Brian Benavides and I went to a professional development opportunity with Vision Research, a leader in high-speed camera technology. After two days of intensive training, we became certified phantom high-speed camera operators and were loaned a camera that can record up to 10,000 frames per second. As a point of reference, this show is recorded at 30 frames per second. What you are witnessing is an experiment we conducted with the help of four 7th graders from Miss Villis's science class. We simultaneously dropped a balloon with water in it and a tennis ball on top of it to see what the reaction of the ball would be. The students first discussed various theories, then we recorded the split-second event and analyzed the results. Hello and welcome to The Life, an e-news media presentation. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. Led by history teachers Tisha Vreeland and Byron Thomas, the seventh grade took part in a program called Constitution Works, dividing up to represent the Supreme Court, the Justice Department, and a fictional newspaper called the Denver Dispatch, and role-playing a fictional First Amendment free speech and national security case, Denver Dispatch versus the United States. Constitution Works is now a rite of passage for BFS middle schoolers. The students prepare their arguments and counter-arguments in history class over the course of six weeks. Then dressed professionally, they head to a courtroom in the bankruptcy court on Codman Plaza just a few blocks away to present each side of the case. After a day of hearing arguments from both sides, the justices write their decisions for homework. The momentous occasion is followed a week later by an all-grade trip to Philadelphia to visit the Constitution Center. Last Friday night, over 500 members of our community came together at the Brooklyn Museum in a spirit of joy, generosity, and celebration. A party, one that can only happen every 150 years, took place with parents, faculty, former faculty, alumni, and friends. Ken Burns treated us to his musings on BFS's place in history. Over $160,000 was raised for financial aid, and everybody danced well into the night. Thank you to the tremendous work by the gala committee, the advancement team, and everybody who participated in this celebration. That was Karen Edelman, our Director of Advancement. Thank you so much, Karen. It truly was a wonderful gala. At the gala, we featured a short documentary, 150 Years of Light, which we're going to share with you today, right after this announcement. You're not going to want to miss the annual all-school art show, May 22nd through May 24th, here at Pearl Street and also at the Lawrence Street campus, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The reception will be held Wednesday, May 23rd, here at Pearl Street in the Lower Gym. Meet the student artists and their teachers at the reception. Student docents will be leading tours of the upper school. Guided by the Quaker belief that there is a divine light in everyone, Brooklyn Friends School cultivates an intellectually ambitious and diverse community that celebrates each individual's gifts. We challenge our students to value and embrace difference as they develop critical thinking skills and apply their knowledge and intelligence both in and out of the classroom. In this rich learning environment, we inspire all members of our community to voice their convictions, to discover and pursue their passions, and to seek our truth. Our graduates are compassionate, curious, and confident global citizens who let their lives speak in, in the, the spirit, spirit of, of leadership, leadership and, and service. On June 15, 1867, an advertisement appeared in the New York Times announcing the creation of the Friends School at Brooklyn. Located in the, in the Friends, Friends Meeting House on Skimmerhorn Street, it was to be co-educational and aimed to provide... Anyone? Anyone? a thorough, practical, and guarded education to a limited number of the younger children of friends and others residing in that city. 
Tuition was $12 a quarter for the junior division and $15 for the senior division, grades one through eight. On September 9th of that year, the school opened with 17 pupils from age six to 13 and one teacher. As Brooklyn grew, so did its friend school. By the 1870s, the student body approached 80 boys and girls. Physical additions to the school space took place twice in the 1880s, as it grew beyond its original three rooms in the meeting house basement. In 1885, the school articulated its educational philosophy to the public for the first time in its annual catalog. In education, the process of self-development should be encouraged to the fullest extent. Children should be left to make their own investigations and draw their own inferences. The true teacher will lead the children without repressing their individuality to find enjoyment in being industrious, systematic, kind, upright, and helpful. Between 1897 and 1927, Brooklyn Friends School expanded physically and in terms of student enrollment and areas of study. New buildings and play areas were added as the curriculum and emphasis on outdoor and athletic pursuits grew and the school solidified its standing in the Brooklyn school community. In 1902, a new building opened on Skimmerhorn Street that added more classrooms, a gymnasium, a lunchroom, and woodworking and art rooms. A kindergarten was added and enrollment grew. In 1907, the school added an upper school for students wishing to go past the eighth grade and held its first graduation ceremony in 1910. While an athletics program was formally established in 1902, a real transformation took place beginning in 1923 with the acquisition of Friends Field. Stories about sports events, gatherings, and dances at Friends Field continued to be one of the most recalled memories of alumni through the 1960s. Integration and equality were at the center of Brooklyn Friends School's development during the middle decades of the 20th century. These values had always been a part of the school's foundation, starting with the Quaker commitment to co-education and continuing with the school's admission of students of Latino, Asian, and Jewish descent. They became even more central as the school began enrolling its first African-American students in the 1940s one of the first private schools in Brooklyn to do so. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, student clubs, committees, and organizations thrived, focusing on enhancing programming for student assemblies, performances, and service projects. In 1967, the school celebrated its centennial, and Brooklyn Borough President Abe Stark issued a proclamation. 100 years later, Brooklyn Friends School continues to believe that education is concerned with the development of character through the acquisition of knowledge, the training of the mind to think, and the growth of the individual's capacities for appreciation, social fellowship, and right attitudes toward men and God. In April 1968, a nationwide school boycott was held to protest the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. BFS students joined others from Friends Seminary for a day of programming on the problems of the war, followed by a protest march the next day. This was the first occasion on which BFS students came together to protest Vietnam, but hardly the last, including a delegation of students who attended the March on Washington in 1969. In addition, a holiday message campaign sponsored by students gathered nearly 10,000 signatures on cards that were sent to President Nixon that read, Please, Mr. President, look to your inner light and ask yourself, can war be ended by waging war? Allow us to celebrate the next holiday season truly in a spirit of joy with the knowledge that American troops are once again on American soil. In 1973, the move to 375 Pearl Street ushered in a new era of progressive education for Brooklyn Friends, and the students continued to be engaged with learning and the world around them. By the late 1980s, enrollment began to rise, and the addition of a preschool in 1985 proved a huge success. The school was poised for yet another new era. As the 1980s came to a close, 
The Brooklyn Friends Preschool and Kindergarten had record numbers of students and overall enrollment continued to rise as well. As the school experienced revitalization, students remained true to its founding principles. They upheld their commitment to speaking truth and understanding their places in the world. The Brooklyn Friends School of today, its buildings, its fashions, its students and faculty, looks different on the outside than the Brooklyn Friends School of 1867 or 1927, 1957 or even 1987. The contributions made every day by every member of its community, faculty, staff, students, parents, alumni, and the family and friends of all, ensure that on the inside it's the same, dedicated to speaking the truth and finding the light in each of us. All of that illumination gathered together points to the brightest of futures. For Brooklyn Friends School, this has been Cassie Broadus, class of 2001. Run, bright, run, Steve! Friends forever, woo! All right, here we go. Tis the gift to be simple. Tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in a place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we will not be ashamed to turn, turn will be our delight to by turning, turn. Thank you to everyone who made today's show possible. And remember to let your life speak. Thank you.